All right, extremely excited to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one with Illinois State Representative Cam Buckner, um, also former University of Illinois Fighting Illini standout. Uh, big, big opportunity to discuss NIL, name, image, and likeness. And it's an interesting dynamic to have somebody that not only played and competed at the collegiate level, but also somebody that now is in a position to enact some laws and have some conversations about you know, what student athletes should receive and how that should look. So uh, extremely blessed and excited to have with us State Rep Cam Buckner. Good afternoon or good morning. Uh, how you doing, Justin? Thanks for having me. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you making time for us. Um, you know, I guess the first place to start, because I think there's so much misconception or so much, you know, rumors about, OK, players are going to get paid. And what does this look like? Um, what exactly is NIL or, or name, image and likeness? Yeah, so uh, name, image and likeness is essentially uh, what us uh, lawyers call the right of publicity. It's the, the right that any human being has to use. Uh, their face, um, their their image, their voice uh, to be able to make money. Uh, up until this point, it, it has been um, uh, prohibited for NCAA student athletes to be able to use their name and likeness uh, in any way that they, that they choose. So once you decide that you're going to play for, you know, X university, um, specifically if you if you uh, take a scholarship, uh, then there are rules and parameters that were in place that prohibited you from being able to use your name, image, and likeness to do anything. Uh, however, what we see sweeping the country now and part of the, the, the bill that we passed in Illinois uh, a couple of weeks ago really is focused on making sure that student athletes are not prohibited from using their name, likeness, and image to be able to, to, to make money, right? So this is about giving them the ability to, to have endorsements um, from whether it's the local car dealer or from, from Nike or Reebok, right? Uh, and it really is about equity. It's about parity. It's about fairness. It's about giving our young student athletes a chance to participate in the in the, in the economy. This is about the fair market. This is about capitalism. Uh, and for far too long, we've we've hamstrung these folks and, and have not allowed them to be a part of, of commerce. Yeah, and that's uh, that's interesting because you've been documented, you know, as a player, as being somebody that truly believed in the, the essence of amateurism and, you know, the, the fair exchange of, hey, as an athlete, I'm here on scholarship. I'm earning an education to a school that, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to attend otherwise. Um, and you were cool with that. So at what point was there a change kind of in, in your, your, your philosophical approach and viewpoint to the way things should be done? I'll, I'll tell you this. I still believe in amateurism. I think uh, the the amateur sports are, are the ones that are still the purest. I think they're, for me personally, they're, they're the ones that, that are the most fun to watch. And, and the opportunity that many young people across this country have gotten uh, based on athletic scholarships, being able to, um, you know, um, create generational wealth, uh, being able to combat generational poverty and create a life for themselves and their families that they may not have been able to do uh, so with, without um, having a scholarship. And, and that's that's my, my, my case. Uh, as a as a young man from south side of chicago um but what i want to be very clear about is that uh this is not about paying players specifically for their performance on or off the field uh, that is not what this what this bill or what this movement is about this is about giving uh, athletes the, the opportunity to do what everybody else in this country can do which is just make money off of their own face um you know i, I think we do have to some point have a conversation about compensation uh, of amateur athletes uh but i think that this you know th this is just a, a piece of the conversation this is not this is not uh forcing anything on anyone it's just giving folks the opportunity to do as i said everybody else can do i also say that you know the argument that many folks have made about about compensation for student athletes saying that you know we, we pay for your school we pay for your room and board and therefore you're being compensated uh, I, th I think it's not enough, and I think it's a dishonest argument. Uh, I've said before, I won't call this slavery, but I will call it indentured servitude. It is sharecropping. Um, you know, there are folks saying that because we pay for you to take some classes, and we pay for you to um, for for you to make your way towards degree attainment. Oftentimes, without giving you the support to, to actually complete that, um, then therefore, you know, we you belong to us, uh, and that's not enough for me. I, I think that it's. it's Extremely unfair. The, the the playing 
field is not balanced. And we have to have real intentional conversations about how we move to a system and a landscape uh, where these, you know, the, the folks who are, who are making billions of dollars in NCAA sports do not look like the people who are on the field. I'll just say that. Absolutely. And I think you, you touched on so many huge things and, and I couldn't help but to think about a conversation that, that you and I had years ago, you know, you, you, me, Pierre, um, I think EB Halsey was a part of the conversation, Jason Davis, but you know, you guys had, had identified that you go in the bookstore and see, you know, a Jersey for sale of one of our guys. Um, and a lot of times that Jersey, you know, all, for all intents and purposes, we couldn't even afford to buy our own jersey. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it's interesting that we want to talk about it, you know, from an amateurism standpoint, but a lot of times we're looked at as a product or we're looked at as uh, a means to commerce from a lot of different places within the ecosystem that is NCAA athletics. And, you know, I think that you you hit on something that was key, which is you still believe in, in amateurism. And, you know, you still believe in the essence of that and the purity of that, but, you know, just also looking for a share of equity, looking for um, a level of, of just, um, you know, even playing field across the board. So it has to be extremely empowering to go from being in the position of, of seeing that and witnessing, hey, that jersey's hanging there in the bookstore that my teammate can't even afford his to buy his own jersey and now being in a position to enact and create that change to me, a bit about, you know, how that feels for you and why this is important for you, why this is something that you're so passionate about. Yeah, Justin, I'm, I'm extremely excited that you remember that story. Um, and I've, I've told this story now in the, in the recent weeks and months more than I had over the last 10 or 15 years. But it's extremely relevant still today. Uh, and being able being able to walk into a store with a teammate whose jersey was being sold for an entire football season. Uh, but therefore, but the, the, the teammate still did not have enough money to, to purchase that jersey himself was a real sobering experience uh, because you look at it, you know that the school is going to get money, uh, the Big Ten conference is getting money, the the place that's selling it is getting money, Nike's getting money, and the NCAA is getting money. But this this athlete um, is 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 uh, performing and generating all this revenue without the ability to generate any revenue for for him or herself. Uh, and that's problematic. That's not fair. That shouldn't be something that we still even have to have a conversation about here in 2021 uh, because it's just it's flat out wrong. Um, you know, it is. A, it's been a joy of my life to to serve in this position, position, Justin. But even more so, to be able to effectuate some change on on things that I, um, you know, know from a firsthand basis, right? So so being uh, a college athlete and watching how, how these young men and women are affected by their lack of ability to bring in any any income and in any revenue. Uh, it, it's something that you know, I think we don't talk enough about. And so if I have the ability and the platform to, to be able to bring it to the fore and to have real conversations with it and put together some some real solutions to move us to a better spot, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed and fortunate to be able to do that. Uh, and I'm happy that, that Illinois is on the right track to get it done here. You, you touched on it. I mean, dialogue and context are extremely important. Um, they're, they're paramount and they're key. So being able to have that dialogue and also have the context of being on, on both sides um, and, and a level of understanding. For those that you know, might have seen, okay, hey, this is a bill and it's passed. And maybe they didn't grow up like us watching Schoolhouse Rock and understanding the steps of a yeah. bill and how that works. Um, what's next for this? What are the next steps? What does it look like moving forward? So we are um, we are very close to the end here with with our bill uh, in Illinois. Um, I carried it in the in the House and introduced it. Um, got it through committee. I got it to a, a full vote on the House floor, and I think that we only have 15 out of 118 members of the House of Representatives. I think we only have 15 folks who voted against it. Um, it then went over to the Senate, where my good friend and, and colleague and one of my role models growing up here uh, on the South Side of Chicago. Uh, State Senator Napoleon Harris, who spent, uh, who did his undergraduate work at Northwestern University, where, where he was a standout linebacker, and then I think had a seven and a half or eight year career in the NFL. Um, he carried it on the same side and was able to get it over the finish line there. The bill is now on Governor J.B. Prisker's desk in Springfield, and the governor has indicated that he will sign the bill sh shortly. And so we're looking up to ramp up here. Um, I've had good conversations with many of the athletic directors here in Illinois. 
including uh, Josh Whitman from our beloved University of Illinois, uh, and they are putting you know, parameters in place to get ready for, for the landscape to, to change. And I really appreciate them for being cooperative and being a partner uh, in, in this venture. That's that's awesome. Um, not only the the growth and the movement of the bill, but also the collaboration and the people involved in it and making it happen um, and identifying and understanding the importance of it. You know, why is this important for student athletes and their families moving forward, especially you know some of those student athletes coming from the inner cities? Um, you know what what makes this extremely important for them? Why should they understand what's happening around them um, and how the landscape's changing? Yeah, you know th this is once again fundamentally about about creating opportunities for, for our young people. Uh, we know that if you are the, the 19 or the through 24 year old from, from Dexter or, or, or uh, E-Course in Detroit, from Roseland or Austin in Chicago, from, from Cherry Hill or, or West, West Baltimore in Baltimore City, um, that many times this is the experience and the opportunity of a lifetime uh, when you get an opportunity to go play college sports and therefore get your uh, tuition and your, and your education paid for. Um, we also want to make sure that we are not hamstringing these young folks and giving them an opportunity to uh, to use the, the talent and the skill that they've worked on their entire life at, at, at this point to be able to compensate. Once again, this is not about payers being play, payer, players being paid for what they do on the field, uh, on the court, on the track, on the soccer pitch, on the baseball diamond. Um, but it, it is, it's about um, having the ability, once again, like any other American, to make money off of their name, their image, and their likeness. And I just want to remind folks, Justin, this is not just about the um, the star quarterback at the University of Illinois or the star point guard at Northwestern or, you know, um, folks like that who are, are the big money, you know, guys and gals who are going to be revenue gener generators based on their skill probably for a long time. Um, this is also about the folks who are playing in sports that may not normally generate revenue, but uh, these young folks who have a great personality and they have, um, you know, some athletic, athletic and physical prowess and people love them and adore them on their campus and in the, in the town around their campus. It's giving them an opportunity to also make money while they're at the peak of their popularity. Uh, this is about young women like I'm not sure if you've been watching the, the women's softball. Nash, uh, World Series, but I have, and it's been incredible to watch. I think the young lady, uh, Jocelyn uh, Allo and uh, Tierra Jennings from Oklahoma, who they call the Smash Sisters, um, who are just uh, phenomenal softball players. But we know that women's softball uh, at the professional level doesn't generate money, right? And so while these young ladies are tearing up the world right now, they need to have the opportunity to, if the if the car dealership or the piece of place in Norman, Oklahoma wants to put their face on a poster, they should be able to do that and gain money from it and not have to be hamstrung by the university or the NCAA telling them that you can't make money off of who you are because we control who you are. Um, this is about fairness and I'm glad that we're getting it right now. That's awesome. And, and that's a great example. I, I love that you use that example because, you know, I think that a lot of people get it misconstrued and there's a misconception that we're only talking about, you know, high level basketball players or high level, you know, like you said, the, the quarterback, the face of the, the organization. Uh, but the reality is no matter what sport you're playing, um, there's an option, there's an opportunity and, and you have the opportunity, you have the ability uh, to capitalize on, you know, what you're able to do, right? Utilize your personality and market yourself become a business yourself. Uh, and there's a lot to why you have that captive audience, right? Like you're talking about right now, those girls are, are having uh, an amazing season. Uh, there's a captive audience. There's more eyes on them right now than there probably ever will be during their playing career. So why not take full advantage of that? So um, it, it's great to hear you, know, you say that. And it's great to hear you put it in context from that point, because I think a lot of people aren't looking at it like that. They're not thinking that. They're not viewing they're thinking, okay, how this might hurt, you know, those those non revenue generating sports um, or those athletes that are not operating, you know, in those sports and at the highest level of those sports. So that's great to hear. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask you about, uh, either about this or other things that you're you're working on that you'd like to mention um, and that you'd like people to understand and know about? Not only you, uh, but some of the work and some of the things that you're passionate about. Well, just I think I think you covered um, a good portion of. of uh the important pieces uh, on us today. You know, I always have a good time talking to you and chopping it up, man, and looking forward to, to doing more of it. But you know, I just want to remind folks that um, essentially we have ran a system that has not allowed our young people 
to participate in our fair market just like everybody else can. If you are a, a saxophone player on scholarship at uh, Bradley University in Peoria, Illinois, uh, you can give music lessons when you're not, uh, you know, when you're not uh, working, um, you know, through your scholarship. You can you can uh, play in a, in a band on the side and make money. But you can't do that if you're a tennis player at Eastern Illinois University. You can't give lessons. You can't, um, you know, go out and, and, and market yourself as a tennis pro uh, because the NCAA prohibits it. Now, I just want to say one more thing, Justin, and this is provocative, but I think it has to be said. Many states are doing this now because the NCAA has been late to the party. The NCAA has been derelict in their duty to protect these young folks and to give them opportunities. We know that whenever there's an opportunity for the NC2A to make money, they are quickly on top of the of the situation. But now that we're talking about other people who aren't the NCAA making money, they've thrown their hands up and they say, well, just, you know, states should figure it out or Congress should figure it out. We should not be in the business of regulating the NCAA in the, in the work that they do. And, and they're wrong for this. Um, they're off base. And hopefully uh, by the, the influx of folks doing this around the country, they'll see that they've got to step up to the plate and be a better organization for the young men and women that they pretend to protect. Man, uh, you you just said everything that I've been thinking I could have thought um, and I could have said. And I think that that's a great way for us to end is that, you know, we, we've got to start holding people accountable um, for for who they say they are and what they say they're doing. And I think that, you know, um, you know, the both of us can can lean on our experiences as collegiate athletes and the success that it has given us in our lives moving forward. So I think that, you know, I'd be remiss not to not to mention or not to point out that athletics gave me an opportunity um, and it gave me a, a lifetime worth of training and development to provide opportunities for me to be successful. So without for that, I'm forever grateful. Um, so I never want anybody to to see this as, you know, a, a shot at at, at our institution or shot at the NCAA, uh, but just a holding on a, a level of accountability that, you know, we have to start to put our student athletes first. Um, and especially, you know, if we say that that's our mission and that's what we're doing. So uh, I appreciate number one, your fight for equity, your fight for equality, um, and your fight for these young men and women that, you know, in a lot of cases are feeling overlooked, feeling neglected, feeling like they don't have somebody fighting for them. So I truly appreciate that. Uh, but more so than anything, I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us today. Help me understand it better. Um, help others out there to have a better understanding and, and a clear viewpoint of what's happening and what you guys are working on in Illinois. And hopefully that'll that'll span across the rest of the country as well. So I, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And, you know, as always, we'll talk soon, my brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your voice and your platform. And let's continue to do it.